For 22 and a half years, I served in the United States Army. During my tenure, I was on many occasions asked to serve as the official, unofficial UFO consultant dealing with UFO matters in the areas of my assignment. As a result of my involvement, I was able to uh, ascertain that the United States government knew a whole lot more about UFOs than it was telling the American public. That there was an intelligence involved, that there was a highly evolved technology. I learned that to a degree we were carrying on a dialogue with this intelligence. We were making every effort we could to acquire this technology and make it part of our own existing technology. We did this, I was told, in the interest of national security. We also had an officially sanctioned deception program. This was in total disregard as to the impact this would have on the individual witnesses and also on their families. This ultimately led to my disillusionment with the program and my involvement in it. I sincerely feel that no government has the right to destroy the lives of the people which it is supposed to serve. While I was in the military and I got to the point where I was no longer interested in trying to be part of the program and actually was going against the program, and I started to be very open and talking about what was going on. This resulted in every effort being made to try to destroy my military career. I was threatened and they even tried to force my military retirement or I could face possible court-martial. These actions failed, of course, as you know. At one point, I even had an individual come up to me, point a gun at my head and inform me we could have a training accident and this would end this foolishness once and for all. I firmly believe that those of us that served in a capacity of the U.S. government in some form or fashion and who were exposed to the truth, we have a moral obligation to the UFO witnesses, the real victims of the UFO phenomena, to expose once and for all this policy and to reveal the truth and that is we are not alone in the universe. Well, Don, it began for me in 1963 when I was assigned to the Supreme Headquarters Allied Powers in Europe. I arrived in the summer of 63 and I was assigned to the Operations Division. I was further assigned to what we call SHOC, the War Room, the Supreme Headquarters Operations Center. And at that time I was given a cosmic top secret clearance, which was and still is the highest level of security access that NATO has. When I was assigned to the war room, I learned that a study had been initiated in 1961, and everybody was talking about it. They were gossiping about it. And the subject was UFOs, and that intrigued me a bit. When that study was concluded in 1964, and it was published, and I was still working in the war room at that time, I had access to this document. I had a chance to read it. And having been exposed to it, I must tell you honestly that my life has never ever quite been the same. Because I read first-hand reports, verifiable NATO military material that indicated that the UFOs were not only real, that they represented something far beyond anything I had ever imagined before. When the study was concluded in 64, they concluded that there were four different groups apparently coming and visiting us. Out of those four different groups, one group looked exactly like we do, so much so that they could sit beside you in a restaurant or in an airplane or in a theater, and you'd never know. And that particular point bothered the military guys a lot. The point being that some of these people from somewhere could be walking up and down the corridors of Shape headquarters, or they could be walking up and down the corridors of the Pentagon. One day at lunch, a lieutenant colonel made the remark, he says, Jesus, do you realize they could even be in the White House? And there was a little forced laughter at that point, I remember, because a lot of us over the years have had some misgivings about the occupants of the White House. But the point make, I'm making is that the idea that aliens could be here in our midst 
bothered the military because if you're not paranoid when you go into the service, you're certainly trained very quickly to be so. It's the nature of the military mind, I think, to be paranoid. But that was only part of the story. The shape conclusions in 64 were that there were four groups that we knew of. They were apparently interplanetary. Some very likely were interstellar. They even concluded that some of them could be intergalactic. When I retired in 1976, many of our military people knew at that point that we were not simply dealing with visitations from people from other planets or star systems. They had concluded by 76 that some of these visitors very well might be multidimensional in their source. The evidence that we had collected and the evidence that they had repeatedly demonstrated to us, and that's no accident, it became very clear after a time that there was a program or a process of some kind underway, that they had demonstrated over and over and over again that they apparently were able to manipulate matter and time. Now this really shook up our scientists. There are a lot of new young scientists in particle physics today who who talk about multiple dimensions. There's a young, brilliant young professor in New York by the name of Michio Kaku, who has written a brilliant book called uh, Hyperspace, where they talk about 10 separate dimensions. I'm not enough of a physicist to try to explain to you what a dimension is, but the idea that there could be intelligences from somewhere else, from other dimensions coming and going into our reality been quite a shake-up in traditional science. I guess I speak out openly and bluntly about this because I feel so strongly about it. I violate my security oath every time I speak about it. I do it intentionally and I do it on purpose because I feel so strongly that the American people not only have a right to know the truth but they have a need to know the truth. The truth, Don, apparently is simply this, that we're not alone, we've never been alone. We are apparently part of an infinite universe filled with intelligent life. I find that exciting. It doesn't frighten me. The SHAPE study concluded in 64 that if they, whoever they were, were malevolent or hostile, that they could have taken this planet and cleaned it up and eliminated us, turned us into dog food or whatever, a long, long time ago that the historical evidence indicates that they've been with us a long time and I've concluded that we had what I like to call an intimate interrelationship with at least one of those groups the group that looks exactly like we do and as, that point is I don't like the word alien I don't think the term alien is appropriate at all here I like to refer to them as family we're related to them I think they had a hand in our being here. And I think the time has come where we're about to meet our extended family. It's gonna be very soon. And the people are not ready. And one of the reasons I do speak out so bluntly and so openly is if in some small way I can help people get prepared for this. Because I believe that this reality, once we have accepted it and understood it, and gone beyond the fear will bring about an expansion of consciousness in the human race that will truly help us and prepare us to go out there and take our rightful place in that infinite community of life.